So some of you will be familiar with BLAST and have used it before and some won't. So you can get in two varieties, protein and nucleotide. So the protein one will search against the protein database. The nucleotide one will search against the nucleotide database. You can do, you could do, though I would really suggest strongly against it, ones where you search using protein against the nucleotide database. So therefore it has to guess what the possible uh, versions of the protein are in terms of nucleic acids. Now remember, there's multiple codons, so that will give you many different sequences that you'd need to test out and run through the database. And it's horrendously inefficient to do that, so you just wouldn't. It's not a good idea at all. And the other thing you could do is do BLAST, and you can get it translated, and then search against the protein sequences. That's a possible, but why get the nucleic acid sequence? Why not translate it yourself and just search with the protein sequence? It's a lot easier. Now, what used to happen, you go to BLAST, put in your sequence search thing, it would run off and uh, do the searches and it will come back with a few hits. All nice and good. The only problem is the databases have grown somewhat which now causes some problems. So at the minute, if I do the search, it's going to look through 111 databases and I haven't included all of the other uh, the subtle ones that you could do. Um, so I'm just going for the core things. I've not even added the things which are slightly tangential and might happen. I've also not added uh, patents and uh, I've not added structural data, or oh, actually, who cares about structure of nucleic acid? That's going to be far too uh, fine, I think. So as I said the other day, I was working for a project, and they were doing part of this um, finding antimicrobial behavior things in novel compounds and novel situations from under the sea or something like that. So anyway, these were some proteins of interest. So here is one of the identified proteins. It's a protein co coding transcript. That's particularly exciting saying so there's a protein here. Um, they think it's a T according to this identification. They think it's a methionine tRNA ligase. That's the function that's been assigned when this gene was detected in this particular database. So this one came from the ensemble database, uh, which is for uh, bacteria. I can show you in a minute ensemble anyway for humans, because it's a nice thing to see. Right, so I've I've highlighted that sequence, which I opened this thing in a, um, whoops, I opened this in a text editor. So this is an example of a faster format. Now, faster format comes from a program which used to compete against BLAST called Faster. When you want to search the databases and you've got a sequence, the ideal way of doing it is you compare each sequence, uh, the sequence that is your query against every sequence in the database. Uh, you align it and compare it. There are exact algorithms that can do that, but they're not amazingly fast. So as the size of the database grows very rapidly, soon it takes an awful long time for you to do that search. So you have to do a more efficient way. So what BLAST and FASTA did was take your um, sequence and they split it into words, into local pieces. And then they go and find those pieces within the database and they find out if there's several pieces which are which align, they're close to each other. Because if they are, then probably the bit in between they'll align too and they can extend the alignment and they can find things. Now, these are called heuristics, as in they're not perfect, but they get the job done much faster than the true exact version. 
I've now pasted in a set of uh, DNA sequence in a faster format. Other supported formats that it will allow are, what does it allow? Does it tell me? Yes, I know those. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whatever. Is it telling me any sequence types it does? Whatever. Anyway, fast is the easiest one. Or you can upload a file which contains your thing. Now, the next thing you've got to do is set your parameters. Uh, so if you want to do the translation of it, that's called tblastx, and then search it against the protein databases. Let's not do that. You want to do blastn, and let's not do megablast either. Now, because we're doing bioinformatics and we want to really know what we're doing, we're going to click on more options. Uh, so this has penalties for what are called gap opening and gap extension. So gaps are when you get splits in the middle of your alignment of your sequence. And that's how bad it rates the uh, having a gap. So it scores a penalty of five to create a gap of one. And then you extend it to be too long. It just adds two. So the total penalty will be seven. So it does that so that you end up with as many long pieces of aligned uh, sequence as you can get. Um, it will give you the first 50 alignments by default and go top to bottom. That's fine. I pick the number of outputs I want. Word size uh, detect alters how sensitive it is to finding particular uh, strings within the set of data. By default, it will pick the top 50. Now, I'm going to pick a thousand. I don't want a thousand alignments. I'll just take the thousand scores. We can worry about the alignments later. And then I'm going to submit the job and hope that it will do it relatively quickly. It depends on how many other people are doing these kind of things at the same time. Now, as I said, faster was an alternative to blast. To be honest, everyone's forgotten that it even existed by now. Uh, I don't think anyone used it out of the 80s or 90s. No, that's not true. We're still around, kicking around when I started, so that's the mid 90s. But it was already being dominated by blast. I have to do keep clicking refresh until it turns up. It's quite a long sequence, and there's quite a lot in the databases, so it might take a while. So while it's doing that, let's see if I can go back and find anything else about. Oh, I didn't see it allowed me to pick the matrix that I could use. Did you see it specify the matrix? Ah, that's for protein. So for uh, RNA, it's not going to specify a matrix. Those matrices are important because they represent statistical models of evolution. So how much change you would expect to see in your sequences over a certain period of time. So if you set them to be uh, low, then you're looking for things which are quite closely related. They've not got a lot, large amount of time between them. If you're looking for something which is very distant, then you want to use different matrices. Yeah, and there's lots of things you can twiddle with, depending on what you're looking for. Ooh, this is not going to work very fast in real time at all. No, you have to work it out which matrix you need to use. 
And it's always a question of try the one you think's best and then try another one and then check that it definitely is the best. Now, when you were looking at those matrices there, there's only two types of evolutionary model you're really looking at. So ones which are based on blocks, which is blossom, and ones which are based on the original uh, tables of Margaret Dayhoff, which are called point accepted mutation 30, 70, 250. So distance, use 250, close, 30, blossoms, uh, most of the time, I think Blossom 45 tends to work reasonably. But you can tweak all these things depending on are you getting no scores. Which used to be, when I was doing this about 15 years ago, occasionally you'd get a, a sequence, you'd run it through the database and you'd get nothing. It wouldn't find any relatives at all. You'd be going, well, that's really funny. I've got a protein here, a, a gene that no one else has seen before. It's not present in any other organism. Then you'd need to search for something more remote to find out what its uh, evolutionary relatives are. Because genes just don't arise from nowhere. They have to have some kind of ancestry. Now, that's practically impossible. I would be extremely surprised if you ever manage to uh, do that. Oh, I know why it's taking forever because I told it to hit a thousand hits, didn't I? That wasn't very clever. Mm, we might be here a while. So let's go something, do something else while that's cooking, as we say.